Hi everyone. My topic this week is cellulitis. And <clears throat> cellulitis is an infection of the dermis and the subcutaneous tissue of the skin. Um, it's usually secondary to an injury or an ulcer or a boil. And um, certain folks have um, increased risk factors for cellulitis. And it would be a person with um, restricted circulation in the extremities, like diabetics or venous insufficiency, um, evidence by varicose veins, anyone who's immunocompromised, edema, uh, fissuring or maceration of um, in between the toe spaces, tinea pedis, obesity, and I don't know why I put that, that's redundant, but any type of immunosuppression. So the pathophysiology for cellulitis, um, typically the offending microbe is Staph aureus and it could be um, you know, methicillin resistant Staph aureus, which is also known as MRSA or MRSA, but sometimes Streptococcus is the colonizing organism. So that needs to be determined. Um, Typical sites for this is the lower trunk and the legs are common, um, but it could be it could be anywhere in the body, but those are typical places for the bacteria to colonize. Um, as the organisms multiply, inflammation and an immune reaction happens, which leads to a cascade of events and that result from either the organism itself or a reaction to the toxins that they give off in a metabolic process. Um, here you see a lower leg that has uh, <clears throat> cellulitis. So you see there's, there's a red area, um, there could be red streaks, there could also be an abscess or pus. So there could be cellulitis that has, um, with or without an abscess or with or without per purulent drainage. So that also needs to be determined and that will inform the treatment as well as the type of microbe. And you need to know, oops, you need to know if, oh, I don't know why that won't move. Ah, get out of there. Um, there we go. Uh, you need to know if the person has an allergy to penicillin because the penicillin based regimen for antibiotics is preferred for certain um, types of cellulitis. So you'd have to use um, something else like a clindamycin or something like that if they did. So signs and symptoms are red in area, edema, which is swelling, pain, and, and it could have red streaks running along the lymph vessels proximal to the infected area. Um, but not necessarily. And treatments are systemic antibiotics and pain management. Cellulitis with or without pus or an abscess, um, as I said, will inform your course of treatment. Uh, the level in, of infection will determine whether the patient needs to start with PO antibiotics or um, needs to be admitted into the hospital and have a course of IV antibiotics. Um, uh, so you make sure you get a culture and sensitivity and find out uh, which, which antibiotics are going to cover this organism and resolve this infection. And um, that will be determined from the culture. Um, the patients usually recover within two days to 72, day, 72 hours, but they might, it might be up to five days for the clinical manifestations to resolve. Um, the extremity or affected area should be elevated to facilitate gravity <clears throat> to remove inflammatory substances, as well as the edema. And you always wanna treat the underlying cause, um, such as edema. <clears throat> Diagnostic testing, there's really not much. You can do CBC, uh, you probably have a high white count if there's an infection there, uh, BUN and creatinine to check. And you might want to do a Doppler um, to rule out DVT, but it's not necessarily diagnostic for cellulitis. But here they might want to make sure they're not having a deep vein thrombosis um, 
first is the cellulitis. Um, so again, I just write cellulitis is an infection of the dermal and subcutaneous skin layers. It's red, swollen. Um, I forgot to say earlier, it will be warm to touch. It will be very painful. Here's a cellulitic um, skin infection and there's normal skin. And there are my references. Hope you guys have a good week.